Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we'll talk about a game I always wanted to play but I got intimidated by it. iRacing. It's time we hit some driving sims on this channel, am I right? I made an account 9 years ago. I did a couple of hot laps, didn't understand much and I haven't touched the game ever since. And what a mistake that was. I'm still shaking as I'm writing the script for this video. I just had two races back to back against real people. But until we talk about the, those races, let me show you what's this all about. Let me show you my experience with the game until that point. Once you fire it up, there is some sort of launcher, as I have no idea how to call this interface. Here you can see at a glance your safety ratings, last results and a lot of stuff you won't understand at first. And I won't go over this interface with you as I'm sure you can find plenty of capable people explaining it on YouTube. We'll go over the sections I used. The most important button at this point for you is test drive. It's the best place to start. While you set up your graphics, wheel, pedals, FOVs and all sorts of cool things we won't get into. Then just drive a couple of laps, see how your settings feel. I did some practice laps on the circuit I knew I wanted to race this weekend, Okayama. I started playing last week, but due to real life and work I couldn't play much. I started training on Ledenon circuit, thinking I'll participate in a few races on that one. But before I knew it, it changed to Okayama, so I started doing some laps on this one. I have a friend who also recommended me Okayama, but with train enabled. Because that's one of the free tracks that recently got updated with better assets and more importantly rain. Well, I had to try it, right? And snap, my Mazda doesn't have wet tires. <laughs> so I had to buy a, a car I know I want at some point, the Ferrari 296 GT3. I learned afterwards there are two free cars brain enabled, but whatever, I don't care. First of all, this car is nuts. I can't wait to learn to drive it. And second of all, I haven't had such good feel of a rain in any sim I've played. The puddles of the curbs made my G27 so loose. It was like I was hydroplaning in real life. If you drive Ozar, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And of course, not knowing the track and the car, I did a mess out of it, but I was still very impressed. So people that got hyped because of the rain in iRacing are not hyping it for nothing. I'm glad to see this. Now let's go back to the MX-5. I started training on it. My first lap went blind with no YouTube guide under my belt or anything. I just drove around a couple of times slow just to identify the apex of the corners and have a very general feel of the track. This being a fixed series, I'm glad I don't have to worry about setups and stuff, just about my driving. My shift changes are pretty chaotic, as you can see in the background, my steering movements imprecise and bad, at least I use some trail braking. My best time in that session was 1.55, I was sad to see I was <laughs> 10 to 12 seconds or so slower than the best times on this track, but it's fine, at least I got some goals now, right? Anyway, after I watched some track guides, took mental notes about breaking points and lowest gear I need to sh downshift in each corner, I did some more practice sessions. TLDR of my practice, I got to consistently do 148 laps, so I ended up my Saturday on a high note, and with the plan of doing my first ever race in an official league Sunday morning. Well, this didn't happen in an instant, by the way. <laughs> I got a lot of spins, and I mean a lot of spins. Some people hate this car for this exact reason. I love it. If you upset the balance of the car, you can so easily spin out of control. Brake too much while steering, spin. Downshift too fast, spin. Go out on the gravel while turning, spin. It happens all the time, until you learn how to control your car, its quirks and start playing on its strengths. TLDR is, after I learned how to control it somewhat, I managed to get that lap time. Oh, and after a while you can even catch the back of the car while it tries to kill you. But I can't consistently do it as I need to throw the wheel too fast from side to side to catch it. Sometimes it works though and it feels good. Oh, <laughs> want to see how you shouldn't enter pits? Check this out. It wasn't intended obviously, but, but I thought it should be a nice addition to this crash compilation. 
Ah, Sunday morning. I woke up, made a big cup of coffee, sat outside thinking about my big day ahead. Then I started the sim and fired up my last practice session before the race. It was great, with one exception. I had consistent laps. If I can pull this level of consistency in a race, I'm more than happy. Then I did a race against the AI. It's pretty easy to set up. I choose 0 to 10% AI strength, not knowing how good they are. Turned out <laughs> they were potato. I qualify first with an 148.6, so I'll start from the pole. I botched the start, of course, because it was my first. A few cars pass me, but I catch up and have a pretty uneventful and, to be honest, boring race. I finish first with a 28 second lead, and I didn't even push it. Okay, so it's clear for me. The time has come. My first ever race. I go to the official tab and queue up in the Global Mazda MX-5 Fanatec Cup. Race starts in 28 minutes. I guess I'll practice more and hopefully <laughs> I get rid of some of the anxiety I feel all of a sudden. While the sim loads, I check my stuff. OBS is working, my position feels good, everything is in order. And the practice is with a lot of fog. Damn it. No problem, I'll take it slow, knowing the car is extra slippery in the first lap. I manage to lock my tires, but I'll tell myself, okay, shit happens, I'm stressed out, and move on. The rest of the first lap was slow, and in the last corner I managed to exit on the gravel again. And I was driving very slowly, <laughs> god damn it. Okay, okay. Second lap, time to push a bit. This is what I was training for. I managed to finish my second lap with 1.51. I try to calm myself going into the second lap uh, as the red Mazda catches up. I'm slow at the second corner and I even exit the track, thinking this guy passes me. But no, <laughs> he plants his car in my butt. Okay bro, Jesus, I let him pass before the long straight. So long, buddy. Then I want to get into the rhythm, you know, gears, braking zones and all that. I see my friend pulling to the right a bit and slowing down. I want to pass on the inside, but he slams my car and quickly leaves the session. Oh my god, what a prick. Even if I did something wrong, which I didn't, that kind of stuff was so uncalled for. You can imagine the rest of my practice. It was so bad. Then qualifying starts. While I don't mess it up this time, my time is mediocre. I can't focus on what I have to do. I can't brush off the anxiety, so I end up with a mediocre 1.51 qualifying time. Putting me in the 8th spot on the grid. Oh well, it could have been worse, right? Now the race. People slowly getting on the grid. I need to stay out of trouble and finish the race. That's my only goal at this point. I have a decent start and we go towards the first corner. I of course spin on the second one, because why not? At least I didn't crash into someone else. I stayed there not moving until everyone passes, as I don't want to hit anyone, and I plan on finishing the damn race without going into the pits. The damage seems manageable, I can still race. I see the yellow flag, but I don't pass anyone. I drive excessively slow for no reason. The second lap I got the last guy on me. I let him pass. I keep driving like my grandmother, but I keep up with that guy somewhat. I spin at the last corner. <laughs> nice. At this moment in time I'm stressed and pissed. A great mental state to be in, right? From this point on my race turned into a single player adventure, mostly. I passed a guy who was pitting, but that's it. The gap between me and Martin was 18 seconds. I passed another guy who was just exiting the pits, but he gets me at the straight. I decide not to block him, as I suck too much. There is no point defending, right? So I finished my first ever race in iRacing on last position. The last guy rage quit or something, so it doesn't count, right? And for that I got a plus 0 0.01 safety rating and 7 championship points. I have no idea what those do anyway. After a short break I go back and queue for my next race. I just can't let the first one sink in. I got a decent practice session uh, and I couldn't do a single qualifying lap. So I said, screw it, it is what it is, let's make the best out of it. Somehow <laughs> I start on the 7th place, I have no idea how, but I'll take it. Then the inexperience strikes again, you won't believe what happened, I swear to god. Pause the video right now, think about what stupid shit some rookie can do, <laughs> then unpause it and tell me in the comments if you are remotely close. So lights pop up, 
red, then green. I shift and accelerate, only to, <laughs> only to go backwards, steering to the right. Oh my god, this was pretty epic. My wheel was not centered. <laughs> and I downshifted into reverse while I pressed the right pedal. You know, so dumb. Anyway, <laughs> it's like I started from the last position at this point. Only the guy in the back stayed there for some reason, perhaps laughing his ass off at my stupidity. First corner, I pass a guy who spinned. I feel sorry for him, but the yellow flag was still up. The next one, there are another two guys. Great. Well, I want to go past them, thinking they will do what I would do. Stay still for a second. <laughs> Wrong. The black car backs into me. It looks like I needed some repairs because I think uh, it pulls to the left or something. I don't know. I politely wait until everyone passes, even the prick who did this, then move on. I pass a guy and I am thinking I want to finish the race, no matter what. No repairs, no bullshit. And maybe gain a few spots because of people who hit a wall or something. In the second lap, with hard tires, the car feels decent. I'm getting close to Julien, I might have a chance to pass him. He seems like a careful driver, at the end of the long straight he decides to let me pass, but he, <laughs> but we both <laughs> hesitate for a second, it's so funny. It's okay Julien bro, I feel you, at least we are not pricks to each other and it's nice and refreshing to see. My relative time to the next guy is 13 seconds something, I, I might be able to make it to be honest, if I pull my head out of my ass that is. I got pretty close at some point, but it was two laps to go. The last lap I actually catch him and I have a go. Right side. Stay on the left. Clear the right. And I finally feel I worked for a spot in this race. Now let's hope I finish it. It would be epic if I crash <laughs> at the last corner or something. But at least I don't spin. I managed to hold it. A couple more laps and I could have just uh, get the P4, I think. My times are bad, but at least consistent. I mean, I could have pushed easily to 149 at least. But the race environment is so much different from than practice. Well, I hope I get rid of this anxiety after 5 or 10 more races and be able to give my best on the track. I'll continue to make videos about my journey in iRacing. Shorter ones with highlights from races, I'll do some more races on this track, but I'll start practicing on the week 4 one, Snetterton Circuit. I can't wait to go to the week 6, uh, as I know that one pretty well, as it's the only track I practiced 9 years ago when I got the first time into iRacing. So before I end this video, I'll tell you my thoughts about this game. So far it's pretty cool, the cars and tracks look cool, the environment outside of tracks is a bit sad on older tracks, but I hear devs will revamp all of them, one by one. The performance is ok, but not stellar, especially with a full grid of cars. When I'm alone practicing, the FPS goes over 150. In a race with a full grid, I get 60 to 70. It's good, but I have a 4090 and I cranked everything up. I know the game is pretty scalable, you can get FPS if you want it. The rain looks okay and feels great. I can't wait, I can't wait to do a few more laps with it uh, enabled. It sucks I have to drive my GT3 car to experience it though, and I have no business driving GT3s at this moment in time. I like how you can find plenty of people doing races, I hear there is a big influx of people into the game lately. So it's a good time to start. The game is intimidating and hard, but rewarding. When you set the fastest lap, it feels like a win every time. At first, even staying on the track for an entire lap while pushing feels like a win, to be completely honest. The online experience can be toxic, as you saw, and from what I hear, this was pretty tame, as people had way worse experiences than this. But I strongly believe these are the exceptions, and I don't care that much, to be honest. I get over these kinds of things pretty quickly. But the experiences can also be good, and I hear it gets better and better as you get higher licenses. I had a good experience with my old G27 steering wheel. I know I don't feel as much detail as the guys who use direct wheel drives, but I know I can still get some relevant feedback out of mine. 
When I'm about to lose my rear, if I lock my wheels, and the best experience was in the rain. It felt great and very similar to real life. I'll try to do some practice with track air enabled to see how it is, but from what I saw, it's not needed. And now about the elephant in the room. I heard a lot of complaining over the years about the monetization of this service. Listen, who saw one or two videos from me knows by now I'm against all monetization in games. I want to pay subscriptions if it's a live service or pay up front if it's a single player. I despise the free to play model. But in games like iRacing and DCS I fully support these kinds of monetization as I see value in these things. This game can get quite expensive if you want everything. But I saw a video of a guy explaining what you need to buy over a two year period if you want to take part of everything you unlock. If you take advantage of all discounts at the two year period, if you draw a line, this game costs you around 26 bucks per month. Not to mention you can stay in rookies for example for multiple seasons. Every race is free with the MX-5 as far as I know. And you can skip a track or two. Do you really need them all? Besides, there is a lot of work put into these cars and tracks. They don't compare with the skin in Overwatch and the likes. That can be done by one artist and one animator in a week. So anyway, it is expensive at first if you want everything, but after a while you will see you own most of the tracks. So you only need a few cars. All in all, if you want to try it, go for it. I had a blast finding the limits of myself and this car. Too bad I didn't do so well under pressure, but it's normal. Better scared, slow and safe than be like this distinguished individual. Until next time, stay safe, take care and see ya.